Hi, I'm Rory Sang Sitokhelo, and I'm an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Rory Sack runs what she describes as a powerhouse through the line creative communications agency that communicates the designed thinking through messages that cultivate unique brand experiences. They move beyond traditional advertising and delve into pushing boundaries with crisp execution and creative driven ideas. Having cut her teeth on the client side at Coca-Cola and Sab Miller, Rory would later cross over to the agency side at Mortimer Harvey, where she learned to structure an agency to deliver value to clients. Rory Sang is the founder and chief executive at Roth Media. All right, welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Rory. Very happy to be here. <laughs> Amazing. So Rory, um, let's get into this. Um, you attended the UNICE um, Girls College, I believe, uh, in Johannesburg, is it? Or Bloom? Bloemfontein. Yes, you did mention. Please do share about um, growing up in Bloom and, and South Africa and your preteen years. Yeah. Yes. There were actually great years. I had an amazing school run. I think most notably, I, I had really a lot of networks and friendships and I was always very well supported. So I just Googled actually what the name of our school is um, ahead of chatting to you. Hmm. And it means good victory. Unisi means good victory. Wow. Um, and it stems from the Greek word. Um, and I think what is really, really cool is the school taught us, you know, that she conquers, she who conquers herself. So I think mm. I've always tried to conquer my fears and try and step forward and into the things that are my purpose. All right, so you would subsequently attend the University of Witzwaterstrand, I believe? Uh, yes. Where you back the BCom in marketing. So why marketing? So I think um, marketing is something that was probably my third option. Mm. Initially, I wanted to be a pilot growing up. Um, okay. So. When I started having an eye problem in, I think, grade wow. 11, I thought to myself, okay, cool, well, do aeronautical engineering. But I had also a huge passion for the arts. I was actually in a play throughout my, um, my varsity career. And as well as in high school, I was in a play every single year, everything from Greece, everything from um, Sound of Music, I literally, Annie, all of those things, I would just be on stage. So when I actually applied to Wits University, I, my first choice was a, a, an engineering, aeronautical engineering degree. Uh -huh. My second choice was a BCom marketing, and my third choice was a BA drama. And I think my mom had a look at that application, and she was like, what is actually going on here? <laughs> <laughs> like, these things do not even speak yes. to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up going for marketing, I think because I felt like it was really the marriage of, you know, just learning and and commerce and being interested in things and economy and law and it's just the marriage of every discipline that I had an interest in. Um, and then I think marketing, I thought, would also be a creative outlet. Well, that's what you assume, you know, I think you, you don't realize that marketing is quite a steady, stern discipline and that it's a science really more than anything else. And yes, I try and practice marketing made artistic now, mm. but certainly I, I do respect the discipline. Um, and, and it's been a wonderful career and a wonderful journey. All right, so I'm a bit curious to know, um, what were you up to between the years 2002, <laughs> when you left University of Witwatersrand, and uh, 2006, when you joined uh, South African Brews? Very interestingly, I thought I was going to move to the UK in the year 2004. Mm. So at that stage, I was, you know, double majoring. I was completely overextending myself in, in the studies aspect of things. And I think just on the back of that, looking into um, my interest in travel, I thought I was going to move to London, go on a working holiday visa and mm. just live there for a couple of years. And my visa got declined and that just shattered my whole world because mm. I was actually going to the UK with my best friend, a, girl I grew up with, Joyce Kamara, and you know, this was our journey. 
But I think it was such an unstructured application. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to leave the country and go do and, and, and be something. So what I did in 2005 on the back of this setback is I joined Coca-Cola and I worked in Coca-Cola for a good six months. Um, it was a very, very exciting business because, you know, I mean, they, they're an incredible brand and they do amazing things. And after that, I joined a startup um, a photography studio mm. called D Photography, and you know they actually gave me a marketing officer role, which for the first time had me applying what I had learned. Mm. And I think there was really no role for that prior because I wasn't really trusted as a junior in in, in Coca Cola. So I think this was the first time I really owned anything. Um, and we went into some very exciting pitches. We pitched for Jeep, we pitched for Microsoft, and we were winning a lot of business. SA Fashion Week, um, Moshito, SA Music Week. So I ended up just really getting a, a feel for pitching, a mm -hmm. feel for selling a proposition. And I think by the time I knew how to do that, I was quite comfortable to go off and, and present what I'd learned to businesses like South African breweries. So I actually started there as a brand ambassador and in next to no time they offered me a, a role in brand development and I worked on an exciting new global brand and it was probably one of the best years of my life. All right, so you spent um, five, all of five years and four months uh, at South African breweries uh, before moving to Mortimer Harvey. Harvey. Please do share about your, the key learnings uh, from that period. I think business development was a much needed experience. I think what was really, really telling is that I had deep smarts in, in, in marketing, but I think from a business standpoint, I definitely could not even think about um, starting an agency till I had been incubated in an agency environment and at least been on the pitch team and gotten a sense of what it is to actually go out and to sell a service or to sell an idea. And I think that really sharpened what I went on to do. Um, and by the time I left Mortimer Harvey, I felt quite equipped to start my agency and my business. And, and I think a, a really uh, big thing is we landed account almost every single year. And we land a project all the time. We have such exciting um, propositions that we're actually able to articulate. And that is what Mortimer Harvey taught me. Amazing. So um, you said um, you left and then started Roth Media, yeah. Media right away. What gave you the confidence um, to start? Well, I think I was always very business centric. So if you look back at perhaps my time um, in varsity, or if you look at my time in you know, in any sphere, I've always had an entrepreneurial interest. You know, in school, I was always selling something or other, be it bangles or brownies. You know, I've, I've always really just been an entrepreneurial person. Mm -hmm. And I think it also helped that um, my family was, was semi-business aware and almost business-centric, you know. Um, and I think I just took that and, and I just started building on it. You know, my mom always encouraged me to own my own thing and to go out there and stand for something that I want to do. And I think by the time I left Mortimer Harvey, I had already known before joining Mortimer Harvey. In fact, I already knew before joining South African breweries that I would end up owning an agency. And it was my dream and I was absolutely going to show up for it. All right. So you mentioned uh, being an entrepreneur and uh, entrepreneurs are known to solve problems. Yes. So what problem was Roth Media designed to solve? I think we're solving for a communication gap that is missing its mm -hmm. core consumers. There's a lot of campaigns that are put forward that just seem to either talk at consumers, they don't really create dialogue, they are nervous and shy of certain segments within our demographics and I think we boldly go there. We put things out there that I feel sometimes we don't believe and we, we, we don't actually sometimes honor the consumer. There was a time where there were so many ads that were really speaking to, you know, grandmothers dancing. And I think people would look on, 
on those uh, executions as almost somewhat condescending to say, you know what, there's actually a bigger voice and much more that we, we have to offer. And we have a far broader sense of interest. It's not just dance and music. And you have to nuance the conversation and the dialogue with us. And we hope to deliver that to brands and to consumers alike. Doing some digging, I found that Rory not only wanted to be a pilot and entertainer. Growing up, you had um, other, you know, interests, including real estate. Yes. Right. Do you still intend to pursue that? Absolutely. Right. That was a really big one for me. I think at the end of the day, I, I end up with uh, a, an exciting portfolio. I think it's, it's such an interesting time for property right now in the country. I think there's so many different um, developments all over even just Johannesburg. And I think real estate is going to mean something really interesting going forward. Even just the, the space we're in, you know, is, is a space where, you know, 10 years ago there was really nothing here and the landscape changes so much when people believe in a space and believe in a, in a location. And, and I'm definitely, definitely on my way to getting involved in property very, very soon, soon as I can find a gap. All right, so what are those major, like, hurdles and challenges that you've had to overcome to make uh, the strides that you've made so far? I think more than anything, we, we really didn't have capital. So there was nothing really resourcing Roth Media. And I think what is pressing and, 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 and um, for us was that, you know, I launched the business on the back of my Provident Fund leaving corporate. So I was always aware that I have zero retirement money because I've spent it all in this organization. Mm -hmm. And that always made me really nervous, but it galvanized me. It means I just did not believe in a wasted day. It means I, I knew every single day I had to deliver a client or a win. And I used to actually just target a certain amount of money that I was going to make that day. And um, once I just structured my thinking around that and, and started building better business models, it's under having a, an idea of how to scale this and to get people involved and how to build a team around an idea or, or our vision, we just started growing and we have not stopped growing since. And I think before walking into a boardroom, I used to feel so um, you know, insecure about having you know, a small team or no team but I just believed in what I knew, and I knew the value that I brought to brands was great because I'd worked with brands before. Right, so talking about values, yeah. um, what are those values that are important to you and to Roth Media? Mm. I think we, we did a piece of work to develop our values, and we actually collaborated the whole business in, in executing this piece of work. Oh. One of them is accountability. You know, I, I think I learned accountability a lot from my ex-employer, and you know, accountability was always about it being very clear and very personal. You've got to own things and run them end to end. And that's something that I brought into my business, I think. Uh, respect, integrity, creativity is very important to us. But I think originality. In, in this age of recycled ideas, we try and be a unique and singular voice. And I think we try and bring something new um, to the sort of strategies or the sort of ideas that we put together. Amazing. So what would you say makes the South African business landscape, you know, unique? I think, you know, it depends on the industry and certainly advertising is really big <laughs> in South Africa. Mm. And um, the face of advertising is changing. We have to be diverse. We have to be um, sensitive to gender. We have to be inclusive. We have to have uh, bold ideas. And what we try and do is really go and partner with brands that are wanting to be bold and to really just smash the status quo. With clients ranging from Standard Bank to Nestle and Pepsi to Nando's, from BET to Channel O, Roth Media has a portfolio that will possibly be as diverse as its people. Tell me, um, what's the current uh, business structure of your firm? So we have um, a wonderful team of about 18 people we have uh, a strategy and a luxury division, which is headed up by Melissa Deseko. We have a brand innovations division, which is led by Lerato Singadi. We have a, a studio, which is led by uh, Lamu Ngobese. We have client service, which Michael Sitlochelo looks after. And then we have uh, production and traffic, which is headed up by uh, Tanya. And we really have a brand development team that is solving for eventing, activation, promotions, and campaign management. Uh, we have a social media team which is focused on uh, creating stronger and more relevant brand dialogue on social media platforms, using content as a, a huge anchor. We have a 
content development uh, division as well as um, uh, a content manager, Didi, who looks after everything from our scripting to our video production. She obviously relies on the creative studio a lot. Uh, with Lamu's background being predominantly in TV, but they package wonderful content which we can really add value to clients on and really just have consumers stop and take notice. We have a wonderful PR division with Dankiso and Naledi who have delivered really scalable campaigns, including the SunMet, including um, the NetBank Polo, International Polo, you know, they, they've had some incredible successes from a PR standpoint. And that's one of our fastest growing divisions. We, we have an incredible team of writers, photographers. We have um, Tahira who looks after our multimedia. She codes, builds CRM platforms. You know, we really have a diverse team of people who are working on a full agency model. And they deliver this mostly in-house, which is quite exciting and it allows us to at least measure and benchmark the work that we offer people. All right, so um, still on the subject of human resource, um, we know it's a critical element to consider when building any enterprise. Yes. Um, how do you typically hire? Well, I used to use an agency. Um, that model did not work for me at all. Yeah. So it wasn't personal. I typically wasn't connected to the people that were sitting in front of me. And I think we've started advertising for roles um, ourselves in the market and really looking after a talent requisition process end to end. And it's really made a difference because we've ended up with people that we want to work with. Amazing. So I'm sure that um, some of your team members may not agree with your response to this question, but uh, what's your leadership style? Really, I think I try to own everything I ask people to do. So I, I, I first try and lead by example. I want to uh, essentially um, own the pieces of work that I do. So I feel like I'm a leader who's in the trenches with uh, my team. Now, I think a lot of business leaders might say that's a, that's a bad move. You know, you've got to kind of be a little bit more aloof. You've got to be focused on um, big and broader problems. But I feel if I do not teach people exactly my standard or what I want them to achieve and how to solve for problems, then I cannot expect them to know it. And, and, I, and I think you also, when you're in the trenches with your team and they can see that you're a part of and you're part and parcel of every single business problem and creating every single business solution, they tend to respect you more. You know, They know that you're going to be there for them because they see that you're there for clients. Amazing. So tell me about your flaws and failings as a leader. Oh, I think um, I'm a pusher. I'm a really, really big pusher, you know. You get stuck on the bottom line sometimes and, you know, you are trying to drive an agenda and sometimes you can drive too hard. And certainly where I've made errors in this space, it, it, it was something that I took it upon myself to immediately change. I think I, I didn't always prioritize wellness you know holistically and i think the world has changed the business environment has changed and people who are empowered who are well who feel good about themselves and feel good about their work deliver better work amazing so what are those um, critical lessons that you've learned um, and can share on running a business to profitability i think um be bold mm -hmm. you know um every single time i have shied away from a deal i've regretted it so you will not find me um you know, kind of wallpaper anymore. And I think before, we used to feel like, oh, we're so small, what do we really have to offer? And then I realized, we're actually everything. We're, we are the future of what this industry looks like. And we have to start acting like leaders and we have to make our voices heard. And we actually have to go after the things that we want and, and but also be accountable for, for the value that we're bringing to clients. So I think now, what I say to people is be absolutely innovative, be bold, do not be scared, go after your ideas. The more passionate you are, the more money you'll make. Um, and, and I really tell people to just never look back. You know, once you've leapt, you've leapt. You know, it's almost like entropy. You can't sort of undo the leap. You have to now be equal to it. All right. So talk to me. I know you're very well traveled. How has travel? and interacting with different cultures, you know, help to shape your person and added value to your business? 
travel has been everything. It's actually how we learn. It's actually how we benchmark. It's actually how we bring new ideas into the business. It's how we, we see what good looks like from a global standpoint. Um, we are exceptionally well traveled as a business and I highly uh, encourage this. We, we want people to go out and, and to learn their discipline in spaces where it's been perfected or, or where the biggest innovations are coming from or where, you know, so our creative director spent some time in, um, in Japan this year. Uh, we've had our uh, innovation, brand innovation head go to the Khan uh, Lion Film Festival this year and I accompanied her there. We've had people go back and do digital courses. We've had people pick up law degrees, but we believe in learning. We believe in developing yourself all the time. All right, so talking about Cannes Lions, uh, I first met you uh, <laughs> in Cannes, that's in the south of France, and there I got a sense of how extremely competitive you were. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you had put in, you know, for this award, you didn't get it and you were furious, like, no, <laughs> we put in work and, and all of that. Uh, but what do these awards, you know, nods, accolades, recognition, what, what would they truly mean to you? Look, they would be everything to me. They would help us profile the business. They would help us really give voice to the amazing things that happen behind the scenes. Mm. I am competitive. I've, I've always been competitive. I'm just as competitive at Monopoly as I am in business. Mm. Um, and I think it's, it's a good thing to be, you know, but I don't, I try not to let it be destructive. And actually, you tempered my, my disappointment that day a lot. And you were like, listen, you know, you, you still have this whole week. You, you may not have picked up the, the Grand Prix or picked up the award you wanted, but you certainly have been able to profile the work that you do in a space where a global industry is, is benchmarking and learning together. And you've been able to make great connections and, and, and that included you. And, and, and that's fantastic. All right, so what are those key skill sets? that a CEO must acquire, you know, to manage people and run a successful business? I would say um, in this day and age, you cannot really run a successful business if you do not prioritize creativity. It is uh, an extremely important skill and you have to teach people in your business to be creative, creative in the problem solving, creative mm -hmm. in their design thinking, creative in their um, ideation. You really have to engineer an environment of creativity. Secondly, you have to foster uh, design thinking in, by way of almost innovation. So innovation is really big to us. Our tagline is the innovation pundits. We want to punt things that are absolutely innovative. And, and I think we pick up a following you know, on our social platforms or, or on, on our videos or the work that we do because people find something new in what we're doing because we absolutely focus on creating a space for new ideas. And I think more than anything, you know, remember to have fun. What is the biggest letdown you've experienced in the business so far? I would say when I've been let down is where an idea has been taken and utilized by my client with a different agency um, without paying us at least a concept fee for, for what we have put together and designed. But we realized that we don't struggle for ideas. We, we don't want for ideas. We come up with things all the time. So instead of feeling like someone's taken something from you, just realize that it must have been good and keep kind of sharpening what we're doing and, and making it scalable and more exciting for, for a different client who will partner us and bring that idea to life. Winning means everything to Rory and she will not stop pushing till she sits at the top with her peers in her industry. However, marketing communications experts are known to work hard and play harder. What are Rory's lifestyle choices and how does she play with her time? All right, so I have a few quick fire questions for you. Mm -hmm. What do you love to eat? I love Mexican food. So I like spicy things, and Mexican food just also has my favorite avo. So you always find guacamole and you find something spicy. So I, I love Mexican food. How would you describe your fashion style? I am elegant and understated. Your favorite fashion brands to wear? Prada and probably Balenciaga, probably Gucci. The CEOs you look up to? I actually look up to more Oprah Winfrey, and I mean, she's not a traditional CEO, but for somebody who's trying to be a, a female-owned business and a, and, and a mogul, you end up really looking forward and, and do whatever Oprah's launching next. But she's a businesswoman I, I really respect. All right, so what's your favorite car to drive? I love a Merc. Mm -hmm. Your favorite travel destination? 
right now it's currently Copenhagen just because I just came back from there and it was so amazing. But if I'm really strict on this, I, I loved Spain. All right. Yeah. Your favorite book of all time? Oh, wow. Pride and Prejudice. Hmm. And what book are you reading right now? Let me see. I'm, I'm reading a lot. I always sort of overcommit. But um, busy with the Gabby Union, uh, must have wine, must have more wine actually. I'm busy with Michelle Obama's new book. I'm busy um, with Seth Godin's new book. So I always overcommit in terms of reading and, and I mean, I'm scheduling just too many things. <laughs> All right. So lastly, I'd like to know, Rory, what makes you happy? Actualizing my dreams makes me absolutely fanatically happy. When I've ideated something, and I see it live taking shape and form, I, I cannot contain myself, that makes me so happy. So I think um, anytime I've kind of gone forward and, and, and done something and just wrath rising has been wrath something rising. that that has made me <laughs> exceptionally happy. All right, thank you for coming on Under 40 CEOs, Rory. Thank you, Mr. Fab. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rory Sitlachelo and you too can be an Under 40 CEO.